In ancient times, people had sacred places all around them in nature. Places they would go to for high festivals, celebrations, or rituals. And these could have been found in every village. However, some places would have been regarded as more sacred than others. At the utmost sacred place of a kingdom or a nation or even an entire ethnic group of people, there would have been one high sacred place above all others. And then the church and the Catholic rulers of the Middle Ages came in and burned them all down. So most of these aren't still standing today, but the location and the sacredness of the place is still there. So in this video where we are going all over these highest sacred places and where they are in each of these northern European countries so we can visit them today. So of course, modern countries that I'm going to speak about were not in existence at the time. Uh, so we're speaking about one to two thousand years ago here. But most of these places were still unified territories and kingdoms by this time. I'll be going over the names of these territories and the sacred places uh, that the people of that territory gathered at. Uh, first, we'll go over Sweden, or as it was called in the Viking Age, Svithjul. Uh, so there's no debate about this one. Uppsala was the grandest sacred place here where all pagans gathered and even the Christians were required to attend the annual sacrifice or they would have to pay a fine. This was a pagan temple covered in gold surrounding uh, a grove and a sacred site as late as almost the year 1100. And in this source by Adam of Bremen it explains the whole ceremony and events that took place there. Of course, the old pagan temple was destroyed a long time ago, but you can still visit Uppsala today and see where it would have stood and see the surrounding beautiful nature nearby there. Next, we have Denmark. This one's a bit more difficult. Uh, most people would say Leire. Uh, we have a couple sources speaking about the same type of pagan temple there, where every nine years, all the people of Denmark would gather for the biggest sacrifice. And we have numerous sources from the Viking Age and archaeological finds at Leire to confirm the importance of this place. But I'm going to go out on a limb in this video and suggest that there was another place that was more sacred. And that was a place called Samsø, an island off the coast of Denmark. And this is actually one of my favorite sacred places in the world. We have seen that it has been inhabited uh, until just after the last ice age. There are several traces like dolmens, burial mounds, passages, and things like that from the Stone Age and the Bronze Age all the way up through the Viking Age. We have a couple Viking Age sources telling about legendary events here. In Gesta the Nordum there was a great battle, and in Hedevaya Saga there were some sacred burials here that were haunted, and Hedevoid picked the legendary sword Tyrfing up from here. We also have Odin himself, who was said to learn Saider on this island. Also, plenty of other supernatural tales coming from here over the ages, and it truly seems like it is a place where people could communicate and get a glimpse into other realms. Also, if we go further back in time, there's an island mentioned almost 2,000 years ago where the Germanic peoples regard it as most sacred, and we think that this island could be referring to Samsa. Uh, but it's not confirmed. Either way, I put it as the number one sacred place in Denmark, but let me know what you guys think. Then we have Norway. This one's definitely difficult. Um, we have many, many mentions of sacred places and temples, but none of them seem to be like the absolute grandest out of them all. Remember, Norway was unified a lot later than these other countries I'm speaking about in this video. Up until the late Viking Age, Norway was still a lot of tribes and small kingdoms celebrating their high festivals and sacrifices at all kind of locally at their regional sacred places or temples. And we actually know where a lot of these were. But if I had to pick one that stands out above all the others, I would say it would be at a place called Tyrsnes, named after the Old Norse god Tyr. Uh, and what we have at this place is an ancient hörgir, or basically a man-made stone pile that would have been used as an altar in pagan times. And the way this location is set up, after the sun has set behind the mountains and 
each evening of either both equinoxes by the way and both solstices but it's strongest at the winter solstice the light shines directly on this area and it's like a beam of light illuminating this stone pile we also have archaeological remains of animal sacrifice with bones and tools here and on top of that we know from the viking age sagas that this region uh, in the west of Norway was uh, tending to be the most spiritual. This is where a lot of the main temples were located and we find a lot more mentions of sacrifices and celebrations in this area in the sources. You know, this is the modern day uh, Møre og Rumstal and uh, Vestland areas. Uh, but I haven't been there to this site, but I hope to go uh, soon. But that's my vote for Norway. Moving on, we should speak about Iceland. Uh, where the Vikings settled there, there are a few places we could maybe mention, but at the top of the list I put a place called Heljafell, a big hill that is mentioned in a couple sagas as a most sacred place where the dead would reside when they die, and it seems to be one hell of an afterlife party sounding like Valhalla there. There's also a temple here that was taken care of very well during the Viking Age, but of course there's nothing standing there today that would have been destroyed when Christianity came to Iceland, but it is still a beautiful place with a lot of energy that you can go to today. We can't forget about England. The Anglo-Saxons were maybe the most influential Germanic people uh, in our world today, although they converted to Christianity relatively earlier than the other Germanic peoples. They were practicing their branch of Germanic paganism in England for at least a few hundred years following their migration, and they would have had their sacred spaces there as well. So. Obviously, we can say Stonehenge. I mean, this one is one of the most sacred places in the world. However, this is much older than any Germanic culture. Uh, with the Anglo-Saxons have viewed Stonehenge as a sacred place too and done some rituals there? Yeah, I'm sure they did. We just don't have any records or evidence of it. What we do know for sure is that there were a lot of sacred places and temples in England place name and archaeological evidence shows this, but what we do know is that there would have been at least four large uh, uh, pagan temples for Anglo-Saxons, because they're mentioned in the literary sources. The biggest one seems to be at a place of where is now uh, Goodmanham, where a pagan temple was burned down. Uh, also in the archaeology we have what seems to be a pagan temple built at Yivering, uh, which was a ruling area for the Anglo-Saxons and a religious site that you can actually still visit the archaeological remains of today. So if I were to pick one of these, uh, of course Stonehenge would be the best one, but uh, other sites uh, that are all over England that are a lot more accessible. Next one, gotta speak about Germany or as it would have been called back in the Viking Age, Saxland. So before Charlemagne came in and ruined everything, they were a very powerful pagan uh, people and kingdom, and they had a place called Irminsur. Not only was Irminsur the highest sacred place among the Saxons, it was the highest sacred place for all the Germanic peoples, going back to the first century, probably thousands of years before that even. This would have been the Mecca of our people. So a massive pillar reaching far into the sky. People uh, think it was maybe a petrified tree trunk or a natural rock formation, we don't know. All we know is that Charlemagne came in and slaughtered any Saxon who didn't want to convert to Christianity in the late 700s. He then used his army to destroy Irminsul. We don't know where it was, but the most common theory is that it was maybe the Externsteine located in Germany near the Teutoburger Wald. The stones here, uh, the stone formations are believed to be what is left of Irminsul, but that's definitely not confirmed. There are some other possibilities as well, it is debated. Uh, finally, we can speak about the Netherlands, or as it would have been called back then, Frisia or Friesland. Um, this is difficult because large parts of the modern day Netherlands, they were underwater during large chunks of history, so it's not exactly a region that would have had a grand sacred gathering point for people to use for thousands of years. Also, the kingdom of Frisia, and um, as they were called in much older times, about 2000 years ago, the Frisi tribes, they inhabited lands much larger than what is the modern day Netherlands. 
We even have one source from 2,000 years ago that refers to a sacred place of the Germanic people called the Pillars of Hercules, and that was located in Frisi tribal territory, where the Romans had not yet explored. So these pillars, we think, could be referring to Irminsul. So I would say Irminsul is a sacred place for the Dutch, just as much as it is for the Germans. But I might also give a place called Donna's Oak to the Netherlands, which was a sacred oak tree dedicated to Thor. Uh, Hercules was the Roman equivalent to Thor, so this is could be what Tacitus is referring to. Maybe they were many large oak trees referred to as sacred pillars at one point in history, but eventually uh, Donna's oak was all that remained, and that was cut down by the Christian Saint Boniface in about the year 724. This oak tree was in the region of modern-day Hesse, Germany. Uh, pretty sure it was somewhere around the small village of Gizmo, uh, but back then it was not far from Frisian territory. Either way, if it was in Germany or the Netherlands, I'm gonna give Donner's Oak to the Dutch, okay? Because it was the Frisians who hunted down Saint Boniface and executed him as retaliation for cutting down Donner's Oak. I think the Frisians deserve this sacred place more than anyone. So that's about it for the top sacred places in each of these countries. Just remember, there are way more, uh, less known ones, and almost every village would have had some regional sacred site nearby. And remember, the Christians specifically destroyed these places and or built churches on top of them, as Bede and many other sources around Europe mention. So if you want to know where these sacred pagan places were in your area, the smaller ones, just look at whatever the oldest churches are in your area, and 9 out of 10, that was an ancient pagan sacred place for your village and your people back then. So that's all for today. Hope you enjoyed. We see you next time.